Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Spot Report for this week. Earlier this month, there was a very significant statement made by a group of Orthodox Jewish rabbis. A statement with regard to the relationship to Christianity. I want to read part of it because it is important in our understanding of uh, the, of the uh, ongoing Jewish-Christian re relationship. Uh, the purpose to do the will of our Father in heaven toward a partnership between Jews and Christians. For nearly two millennia of mutual hostility and alienation, we Orthodox rabbis uh, who lead communities, institutions, seminaries in Israel, the United States, and in Europe, recognize the historic opportunity that is now before us. <clears throat> we seek to do the will of our Father in heaven by accepting the hand offered to us by our Christian brothers and sisters. Jews and Christians must work together as partners to address the moral challenges of our ear. Now notice, <clears throat> this is a ortho these are Orthodox rabbis. And the best friends that... Uh, Orthodox rabbis have, and many of them recognize this, are Christians who take seriously the covenant promises of God. Uh, I think Israel as a nation recognizes this as well. But this is a statement. These are not Reformed Jews. Reformed Jews don't uh, adhere to the scriptures like the Orthodox do, nor do the conservative. So this is a significant statement. <clears throat> They go on, the Shoah, the Holocaust, ended 70 years ago. It was the warped climax to, to centuries of disrespect and oppression, rejection of Jews, and constantly, con consequent enmity that developed between Jews and Christians. In retrospect, it is clear that the failure to break through this contempt and engage in constructive dialogue for the good of mankind weakened resistance to evil forces of anti-Semitism that engulfed the world in murder and genocide. And the Holocaust was a living testimony of that. Secondly, they say, we recognize that since the Second Vatican Council, <clears throat> the official teachings of the Catholic Church about Judaism have changed fundamentally, uh, fundamentally and irrevocably. The promulgation of Nostra Adate Fifty years ago, that was what came out of Vatican II. <clears throat> um, the promulgation of Nostra, uh, Nostra Adate 50 years ago started the process of rec reconciliation between the two communities. Nostra Adate and the later church documents, it inspired unequivocal, uh, inspired unequivocally re to reject any form of anti-Semitism. Likewise, to affirm the eternal covenant between God and the Jewish people, and to reject deicide and stress the unique relationship between Christians and Jews who were called, quote, our elder brothers by Pope John Paul II and, quote, our fathers in faith by Pope Benedict XVI. On this basis, Catholics and other Christian officials stated an honest, started an honest dialogue with Jews that has grown during the last five decades. We appreciate the church's affirmation of Israel's unique place in sacred history and the ultimate world redemption. Today, Jews have experienced sincere love and respect from many Christians. These are evangelicals primarily, and more specifically, Christian Zionists. Today, Jews have experienced sincere love and respect from many Christians that have been impressed in many dialogue initiatives, meetings and conferences around the world. Then I quote, uh, uh, from some of the rabbis of the past. For example, as did Maimonides and Yehuda Alevi, we acknowledge, these Orthodox rabbis, we acknowledge that Christianity is neither an accident nor an error, but the will, define outcome, and gift to the nations. In separating Judaism and Christianity, God willed a separation between partners with significant theological differences, not a separation between enemies. That's debatable, certainly from the New Testament. Rabbi Jacob Emden wrote that Jesus, uh, quote, Jesus brought a double goodness to the world. On the one hand, he strengthened the Torah of Moses majestically. And not one of his, our sages spoke more emphatically concerning the immutability of the Torah than did Jesus. That's what these rabbis are saying. On the other hand, he removed idols from the nations and obligated them in the seven commandments of Noah. 
so that they would not behave like animals of the field and distill them firmly with moral traits. Christians are congregations that work for the sake of heaven, who are destined to endure, whose intent is for the sake of heaven, and whose reward will not be denied. Uh, <clears throat> again, this is a welcome statement on the part of the Orthodox Jews. But I think it's important to remember that, uh, number one, the Catholic Church still holds to replacement theology. It still holds to a supersessionism. That is to say that the Church, or the Catholic Church, has superseded Israel in the covenant promises of God. It, it is the new Israel. Uh, uh, Pope Francis has said uh, just more recently that Catholics should not try to convert Jews. Uh, because they can evidently make it just on the basis of obedience to the Torah. But the New Testament gives a different picture. And I think the New Testament, especially uh, the writings of Paul, and I want to focus just briefly on a passage from Ephesians chapter 2 that gives uh, final clarity to this, to, to this, in my view. Chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 11. Therefore remember... Remember that formerly you who are Gentiles, he's speaking to Gentiles, he's the apostle to the Gentiles. Remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and call the uncircumcised by those who call themselves of circumcision. Remember that at that time, while you're Gentiles, at that time you were separate from the Messiah. You were separate from Christ, the Messiah. You were excluded from citizenship in Israel. That's your former condition excluded from citizenship in Israel, foreigners to the covenants of promise without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Messiah Jesus, you, Gentiles, who were once were far away, have been brought near through the blood of the Messiah. His purpose, that is Jesus, the purpose of Jesus, <clears throat> verse 15, was to create in himself one new man out of the two, out of Jews and Gentiles, to create one new man and thus making peace between the two. He is the one that ultimately brings us together and makes peace. Consequently, verse 19, Consequently, you're no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. You are a part of the Israel of God at this point because of your faith in Jesus. Uh, you're members of God's house, household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Messiah Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Uh, supersessionism is never endorsed biblically. The Catholic Church has endorsed that and advocated that since the Council of Nicaea in AD 325. It's not the case. And there are many evangelicals Christian Zionists who recognize that that's not the case. On the other hand, the New Testament speaks of a extension, a building of Israel, an inclusion of the understanding of the Israel of God that now includes Gentiles who believe in Jesus. That's the good news. That's the one new man that we're advocating, and that's the one new man that will ultimately stand uh, representing the God of heaven, representing Yahweh and his son Jesus. That's the message of Christmas. That's good news. And so I say to you, have a blessed Christmas. Until next week, od ki yavo shilo, the Messiah comes, yivareka Yahweh, Yahweh bless you, bless those you love, and certainly bless those who love you.